already in? All, all my classmates is already joined, ma'am. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is my my mistake, Gures. It's okay, never mind. <clears throat> Pak Adi is a good collab collaboration with Pak Adi. Ah, uh, yeah. Because so we substitute. I just told that uh, it is everything okay, but I didn't check the. I mean, uh, the date of of a lecture. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's only sixteen now. Yeah. How about the others? Uh, Budian class and Bulis and Bulita. Andi, Andi, yeah, Bulita, Pak Andi is main. Is the the time of Pak pa Andi and Bulita? Ah, Bulis, yeah, morning, Bulis. Budian also. Bu. Respati, yeah, apa kabar? Iku wangi besono, masih sama mudur ngono. Sorry, ono lah. Kelasku ono sing jam delapan empat lima kok. Nanti ya resik sweet kak ngono. Mo, kelas O, eh, O, eh, kelas C, eh, eh kelas C, aku. Okay, okay anyway, uh, we should start. I think this time is. Yeah. Okay, excellencies, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you. Uh, good morning, and we are delighted to welcome you to the International Case Lecture 3 in 1 program with the title Plant Breeding Classical to Modern Approach for Better Crops. Let me introduce myself. My name is Aziri Gautama Arifin, and I will be MC for today's class. Selamat pagi Bapak Ibu dan adik-adik mahasiswa. Selamat datang di International Guest Lecture 3 in 1 program yang berjudul Plant Breeding Classical to Modern Approach for Better Crops. Perkenalkan nama saya Aziri Gautama Arifin dan saya akan menjadi moderator untuk kelas hari ini. Before we start the class, I will remind you that in the end of the class there will be a link for attendance form. Please do not forget to fill the form. And for the students of plant breeding class, there will be another link with quiz in it. Please fill in that distinct form. Thank you. Um, today, Professor Ozaki will be sharing with us about genetic-based theory of cross-plant cross-pollinated plants. The lecture will be held for 60 minutes and continued with this discussion sessions for 20 minutes. Uh, with that, I ask you to give your full attention to Prof. Ozaki. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prof. Ozaki. Thank you for the introduction of me. Then, to tell you the truth, I was very surprised in last uh, Sunday because Arifin Sensei sent me email that my presentation is scheduled on Monday. <laughs> oh, I'm very surprised, but uh, today is a uh, uh, schedule, I think. Then uh, I'll start uh, show you. Wait. Is it okay? Yeah, it is. Uh, yep. Hello, and nice to meet you, everyone. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. I am. Yeah. I yes. am Yuki. Thank you. We get. Yeah. I am Yuki Ozaki in Kyushu University, Fukuoka, Japan. Thank you for Professor Dr. Arifin Nausi Health for providing me such a nice and honorable uh, introduction. Last time I made a presentation of the plant reading. Lecture, basic method for selection in self-pollinated plants. Today, I talk about the genetic-based theory of cross-pollinated plant. There are major root crops that reproduce via allogamy. Allogamy and autogamy are two forms of fertilization of gametes that occur in flowers. Here, 
the method of pollination determines the type of fertilization. The main difference between allogamy and autogamy is that allogamy refers to the fertilization of a, of a flower by pollen from another flower, especially one on a different plant, while autogamy refers to self-fertilization. Furthermore, cross-pollination occurs in allogamy, while self-pollination occurs in autogamy. Allogamy occurs when fertilization of the flower of a plant is occurred by pollen donated by a different plant within the same species and is synonymous with cross-pollination, cross-fertilization, or outbreeding involving the actual fusion of gametes. This table shows an example of Arogama species list. Although some of these species are capable of artificial self-crossing, cross-pollination is commonly observed in the natural state because of the mechanisms that prevent self-crossing. Though predominantly pollinated, some of these species may have another reproductive mechanisms in breeding and crop cultural systems. For example, banana is vegetatively propagated and not grown from seed economically, as a cassava and sweet potato, whereas cabbage and maize are produced as hybrid. Arogamous species depends on agents of pollination, especially wind and insects, and hence tend to produce large amount of pollen and have large, bright colors, fragrant flowers to erect insects. They commonly have taller stamens than cape carpels or use other mechanisms to better ensures the disposal of pollen to other plant flowers. Other provisions that promote cross-fertilization are mechanisms that control the timing of the re receptiveness of the stigma and the shedding of pollen, and thereby prevent autogamy within the same flower. Importantly, the deanthers release their pollen before the stigma of the same flower is receptive. In protogeny, the stigma is receptive before the pollen is shed from the anthers of the same flower. Several mechanisms occur in nature by which cross-pollination is ensured. The most effective being dioecy, monoecy, daikogami, self incompatibility, and male sterility. Some mechanisms are stringent in enforcing cross pollination, for example, dioecy, while others are less so, for example, monoecy. These mechanisms are exploited by plant breeders during the controlled pollination phase of their breeding programs so that only desired pollen sources participate in sharing the next plant generation. Some breeding methods focus on individual plant improvement, improvement, whereas others focus on improving plant populations Plant populations have certain dynamics which impact their genetic structure. The genetic structure of a population determines its capacity to be changed by selection. For example, improved by plant breeding. Understanding population structure is key to deciding the plant breeding options and selection strategies to use in a breeding program.
A population is a group of sexually interbreeding individuals. The capacity to interbreed implies that every gene within the group is accessible to all members through the sexual process. A gene pool is the total number and variety of genes and alleles in a sexually reproducing population that are available for transmission to the next generation. Rather than the inheritance of traits, population genetics is concerned with how the frequency of alleles in a gene pool change over time. Understanding population structure is important to breeding by either conventional or unconventional method. Breeding of cross-pollinated species tend to focus on improving population rather than individual plants, as is the case in breeding self-pollinated species. To understand population structure and its importance to plant breeding. It is important to understand the type of var variability present and its underlying genetic control. In addition to the mode of selection for changing the genetic structure. To understand the genetic structure of a population, Consider a large population in which random mating occurs with no mutation or gene flow between this population and others, no selective advantage for any genotype, and normal meiosis. Consider also one locus, large A, with two alleles, large A and small A. The frequency of allele large A in the gene pool is P, while the frequency of allele small a is Q. Also, P plus Q equal 1, 100 of the gene pool. Assume a population of N diploids in which two alleles, large A and small a, occurs at one locus. Assuming dominance at the locus, three genotypes, large A, large A, large A, small A, and small A, small A, are possible in an F2 segregating population. Consider a random mating population, each male and each female has equal chance of mating with any female gamete. Random mating involving the previous locus, large A, small A, will yield the following genotypes, large A, large A, large A, small A, and small A, small A, with the corresponding frequencies of P square, 2PQ, and Q square, respectively. The gene frequencies must add up to unity. Consequently, P square P plus 2PQ plus Q square is 1. This mathematical relationship, P square plus 2PQ plus Q square is equal 1, is called the Hardy Weinberg equilibrium. equilibrium. Hardy from England and Weinberg from Germany discovered that equilibrium between genes and genotypes is achieved in large populations. They showed that the frequency of genotypes in a population depends on the frequency of genes in the processing generation, not on the frequency of the genotypes. The allele frequencies in subsequent generation, both the genotype and the gene frequencies will unchanged. The, equi the equilibrium will be provided under 
the first, random mating occurs in a very large diploid population. The second is allele large A and allele large small A are equally fit. One does not confer a superior trait than the other. The third is there is no differential migrating of one allele into or out of the population. The fourth is the mutation rate of allele large A is equal to that of allele small a. In other words, the variability does not change from one generation to another in a random mating population. The maximum frequency of the heterozygotes H cannot exceed 0.5. The Hardy Weinberg law states that equilibrium is established at any locus after one generation of random mating. From the standpoint of plant breeding, two states of variability are present. Two homozygotes, A1, A1, and A1. Uh, sorry a1a1 and a2a2 called free variability that can be fixed by selection and the intermediate heterozygous a1a2 called hidden or potential variability that can generate new variety variability through segregation in autocrossing species the homozygotes can hybridize to generate more heterozygotic variability. Under random mating and no selection, the rate of crossing and segregation will be balanced to maintain the proportion of free and potential variability at 50%, 50%. In other words, the population structure is maintained as a dynamic flow of crossing and segregation. However, with two loci under consideration, equilibrium will be attained slowly over many <clears throat> generations. If genetic linkage is strong, very closely linked, the rate of attainment of equilibrium will even be much slower For the Hardy Weinberg equilibrium to be true, several conditions must be met. However, some situations provide approximate conditions to safety the requirement, uh, so, sorry, satisfy the requirement. The Hardy Weinberg equilibrium requires a large random mating population, among other factors as previously indicated. To be true. However, in practice, the law has been found to be approximately true for most of the genes in most cross pollinated species, ex except when non random mating occur. Whereas, inbreeding is a natural feature of self pollinated species, a sort of a Associative mating can occur when cross pollinated species are closely spaced in the field. Research has shown that it is possible for alleles at two loci to be in random mating frequencies and yet not in equilibrium with respect to each other. Furthermore, equilibrium between two loci is not attained after one generation of random mating as the Hardy Weinberg law concluded, but is attained slowly over many generations. Also, the presence of genetic linkage will further slow down the rate of attained of equilibrium. If there is no linkage, that is C equals 0 0.5 in this figure. 
the differential between actual frequency and the equilibrium frequency is reduced by 50% in each generation. At this rate, rate it would take about seven generations to reach approximate equilibrium. However, at C equals 0 0.01 and C equals 0 0.001, it would take about 69 and 693 generations respectively to reach equilibrium, very long generation. And composite gene frequency can be calculated for genes at the two loci. For example, if the frequency at locus large A small a is 0 0.2 and that for locus small b small e b equal 0 0.7, then composite frequency of the genotype large a small a small b small e b equal 0 0.2 times 0 0.7 equal 0 0.14. As previously indicated, plant breeding is a special case of evolution, whereby a mixture of natural and especially artificial selection operates rather than natural selection alone. The hardy Weinberg equilibrium is not satisfied in plant breeding because of factors including non-random mating. Autocrossing promotes random mating, but breeding methods impose certain mating schemes that encourage non-random mating, especially inbreeding. Inbreeding is measured by the coefficient of inbreeding, large f, which is a probability of identify of alleles by descent. The range of large f is is zero, no inbreeding random mating to one prolonged selfing. It can be shown mathematically that if f equals zero, then the equation reduces to the familiar p square to p square plus two p q plus q, q squares. However, if f large f equal one, it becomes p zero Q. The results show that any inbreeding leads to homozygous, all or nearly all loci homozygous, extreme inbreeding leading to a complete absence of heterozygotes, all or nearly all loci heterozygous. Differential fitness is a factor that mitigate against the realization of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. According to Darwin, the more progeny left on average by a genotype in relation to progeny left by other genotype, the fitter it is. It can be shown that persistence of alleles in the population depends on whether they are dominant, intermediate, or recessive in gene action. Un unfit recessive alleles is fairly quickly reduced in frequency but declines slowly thereafter. On the other hand, an un unfit dominant allele is rapidly eliminated from the population while an intermediate allele is reduced more rapidly than a recessive alleles because the former is open to selection in the heterozygote. The point has already been made that the method used by plant breeders depend on the natural means of reproduction of the species. This is because each method of reproduction has certain genetic consequences. In figure A, 
there is no inbreeding because there is no common ancestral pathway to the individual A. Namely, all parents are different. However, in figure B, inbreeding exists because B and C have common parents. That is, they are full sieves. To calculate the amount of inbreeding, the standard pedigree is converted to an allow di diagram. Each individual contributes a half of its genotypes to its offspring. The coefficient of relationships R is calculated by summing up all the pathways between two individuals through a common ancestor. For example, B and C probably inherited one a half and a half equal one fourth of their genes in common through ancestor D. Similarly, B and C probably inherited one fourth of their genes in common through ancestor E. The coefficient of relationship between B and C as a result of common ancestry is hence RBC equal one fourth plus one fourth plus one half equal 50%. As a more complex pedigree are shown in this figure, as previously indicated, Prolonged selfing is the most extreme form in, of inbreeding. With each selfing, the heterozygosity decreased by 50%, whereas the homozygosity increases by 50% from the previous generation. The approach to homozygosity depends on the intensity of inbreeding as illustrated this figure. The more distant the relationship between parents, the slower is the approach of homozygosity. The coefficient of inbreeding F previously discussed measures the probability of identity of alleles by descent. This can be measured at both the individual level as well as the population level. At the individual level, F measures the probability that any two alleles at any locus are identical by descent. For example, they are both produce of a gene present in a common ancestor. At the population level, F measures the percentage of all loci which were heterozygous in the base population but have now probably becomes homozygous due to the effect of inbreeding. There are several methods used for calculating F. The tendency towards homozygosity with inbreeding provides an opportunity for recessive alleles to be homozygous and hence expressed. Whereas inbreeding generally has little or no adverse effect in inbred species. Crossbred species suffer adverse consequences when the recessive alleles are less favorable than the dominant alleles, called inbreeding depression. It is manifested as a reduction in performance because of the expression of less fit or deleterious alleles. The severity of inbreeding depression varies among species being extreme in species such as alfalfa in which 
Inbreeding produces homozygous plants that fails to survive. Furthermore, the effect of inbreeding is most significant in the first five to eight generations and negligible, negligible after the eighth generation in many cases. Inbreeding is desirable in some breeding program. Inbred cultivars of self-pollinated species retain their genotype through years of production. In cross-pollinated species, inbred lines are deliberately, deli sorry, deliberately <laughs> developed for use and as parents in hybrid seed production. Similarly, partially inbred lines are used as parents in the breeding of synthetic cultivars and vegetatively propagated species by reduce, reducing the genetic load. Another advantage of inbreeding is that this uh, increases in increases the genetic diversity among individuals in a population, thereby facilitating the selection process in a breeding program. Mating is a way by which plant breeders impact the gene frequencies in a population. For mating systems, are commonly used to affect inbreeding, self-fertilization, full sib mating, half sib mating, and back crossing. Self-fertilization is a union of male and female gametes. Full sib mating involves the crossing of pairs of plants from a population. In half sib mating, the population source is random from the population, but the female parents are identified and identifiable. In the back cross in the F1 is repeatedly crossed to one of the parents. Self fertilization and back crossings are the most extreme forms of inbreeding attaining a coefficient of inbreeding of, uh, after four generations of mating. Autopolyploids have multiple alleles and hence can accumulate more deleterious alleles that remain masked. Inbreeding depression is usually more severe in autopolyploids than diploid species. However, the progression to homozygosity is much slower in autopolyploids than in diploids. Tomato, Solanum, scientific name is Solanum lycopelscum, is a very important vegetable, both for the fresh market and for processed food industry. Also cultivated as an annual, tomato grows as a perennial in its original habitat in Peru. The original site of dom domestication of tomato is likely in Mexico. According to the recent classification, tomato belongs to section Lycopelscon and has 12 wild relatives, as shown in this table. Of tomato and these 12 relatives, nine, number one to nine in the table, are previously defined in the genus of Lycopelscon. Accessions of nearly all these nine species have been successfully used to introduce variable traits for crop improvement, especially monogenic source conferring resistance to fungal, nematodes, 
bacterial and viral diseases. The phylogenic relation of these old Lycopelus species with cultivated tomato has been extensively studied. Lycopelus is a former genus name of tomato, now is a solanum. Based on comparative analysis of morphology, self compatibility, crossability, and molecular markers, the classical taxonomic trait which have been used to divide all the Lyscopelus species are fruit color and cell compatibility. In the phylogeny generated with molecular markers, different patterns of species relationships have been obtained. Some are congruent with result of classical taxonomy, and others add resolution to new division that are not always in agreement. One of the common breeding objectives is in tomato is breeding for resistance to the most destructive pests and pathogens. Tomato hosts more than 200 species of a wide variety of pests and pathogens that can cause significant economic losses. Tomato powdery mildew caused by Oidium neodicopelscosi occurred for the first time in 1986 in the Netherlands. It has since then spread with 10 years to all European countries and is nowadays worldwide disease on tomato, except for Australia, where another species occur. Upon the outbreak of the, the fungi, all tomato species, all, all tomato cultivars were susceptible, and this fungus was the only one to be controlled by fungicide in greenhouse tomato production in Northwest uh, Europe. By 1996, search for resistance genes against this disease was started. Here, the practice on breeding tomatoes with resistance to powdery mildew is explained as an example for integration breeding. These figures show tomato plant inoculated with tomato powdery mildew. Left figure, The plant on the left is from tomato wild species, Solanum peruvianum, showing no powdery mildew infection. The plant on right side from Solanum ricoperuscum cultivar money maker, showing fungal clones, uh, sorry, fungal colonies growing on infected leaves. Right figure. A closer to look at the colonization of tomato powdery mildew growing on the upper side of the leaf. Pictures were taken 15 days post inoculation. This figure shows the illustration of marker assisted selection. On the left, genetic linkage map of tomato chromosome 6 showing that the OL1 and OL3 genes conferring resistance to tomato powdery mildew are located at the same locus and the flanked by markers three and four. On the right, electrophoretic patterns of PCR markers showing marker genotypes of six plants. The upper panel of marker three and the lower panels for marker four. Plants one to four are different individuals of cross progeny. Plant five and six are parental plants that are susceptible and resistant to tomato powdery mildew, respectively. 
M indicated DNA size marker of one kilo base ladder. For marker assisted selection, marker flanking the target gene is often used. For marker three, plants one and three are selected and expected to be resistant to powdery mildew since they have the, the marker alleles of the resistant parent, then six. For marker four, plant one, two, three are selected and expected to have to be resistant since they have the resistance marker alleles as the resistance parent plants. And parent one is homozygous and the parent two and sorry, plant one are uh, homozygous and plant one, two and three are heterozygous, but all is expected to be a disease resistance. Near isogenic lines that carry small interrogressed chromosome fragment from related species, wild species in a cultivated tomato. Background and must, uh, most useful breed, uh, breed in a breeding program. This is wild species. And we can get F1 and F1 are crossed with the Solanum ricoperuscum consequently. To develop near isogenic lines that only differ in the disease resistance gene, resistant donor accession, accessions were crossed with susceptible ricoperuscum, uh, uh, sorry, Solanum ricoperuscum money maker. Back cross were made starting from crossing F1 plant back to MM, money maker. During the back crossing, selection of resistant BC plant can be performed in two ways. One is by testing BC plant with the inoculation of the pathogen, such as powder mildew, and the other is to genotype them with genetic markers linked to individual resistance loci. If we have marker linked to the disease resistance gene, we could apply marker assisted selection. And the disease inoculation tests are often carried out when the disease assays are easy to be scored. Namely, the resistance phenotype is clear to identify the assay can be done by using seedlings. In the case that disease assay is not easy to perform, for example, due to quantitative pathogens or, uh, sorry, quarantine pathogens, or if the disease test has, be, has to be performed at the late developmental stage, marker-assisted selection would be a convenient way to select resistance plant. As previously stated, inbreeding or crossing closely related parents result in reduced fitness or vigor of individuals in the pathogen pathogenita population, a condition called inbreeding depression. Reduction in fitness usually manifests itself as a reduction in vigor, fertility, and productivity and is seen as lower biomass per plant, lower fecundity, malformation of organs, and lower germination of seeds. The effect of inbreeding is more severe in the early generation than the in later generations. Just like heterosis, inbreeding depression is not uniformly manifested in plants. Plants including onion, sunflower, cucurbits, maize, and rye are rather tolerant of inbreeding with low or no inbreeding depression. On the other hand, crops such as alfalfa or carrot are highly 
intolerant of inbreeding. The concept of genetic load the genetic load may be defined as a decrease in fitness of the average individuals in a population due to the presence of deleterious genes or genotypes in the gene pool. In other words, it is a reduction in selective values for a population compared to what it would otherwise have if all the individuals had the most favored genotype. Statistically, its values range between zero and one. It is generally believed that most species carry a genetic load of three to five recessive lethal genes. The genes are mostly hidden. Inbreeding usually causes the genetic load of, to increase. Genetic load has three components, mutational load, segregational load, heterozygous advantage, and uh, substitutional or frequency dependent load. Genetic load generally lowers the variability of a population. Because of selection, the frequency of deleterious recessive alleles in a population is expected to decrease rapidly with high levels of inbreeding. Eventually, these alleles may be lost from the population, a process sometimes referred to the, as purging populations of their genetic load. Populations that have experienced long period of inbreedings are expected to show less inbreeding consequences. Hybrid buyer or heterosis is opposite and complementary to inbreeding depression. In theory, the heterosis observed after crossing is expected to be equal to the depression upon inbreeding. Considering a large number of crosses between lines derived from a single base population. In practice, plant breeders are interested in heterosis express, expressed by specific crosses between selected parents or between populations that have no known common recent origin. Furthermore, because heterosis is subjected to the interaction between genotype and the environment. It is desirable to describe the heterosis of a particular hybrid lines for a specific trait at a specific location or under specified environmental conditions. Hybrid bigger may be defined as the increase in size, bigger, fertility and overall productivity of a hybrid plant, F1, over the mid parent value. Average performance of the two parents, P1 and P2. It is calculated as a difference between the crossbred and inbred means. The estimate is usually calculated as a percentage, the synonymous, synonymous term heterosis was coined by G.H. Uh, Schur. Heterosis is a little commercial value and hence value to the farmer if a hybrid will only exceed the mid parent in performance. Hence, the Practical definition of heterosis is hybrid bigger that greatly exceeded the beta or higher parent in a cross. Such advantageous hybrid bigger is observed in particular when breeders cross parents that are genetically diverse. Heterosis occurs when two inbred lines of outbred species are crossed. In theory, heterosis may be positive or negative. 
there is largely an artificial distinction. Positive heterosis is generally desired for trait like yield, while negative heterosis is desired for traits such as early maturity. These kind of heterosis may be distinguished as mid-parent standard variety and beta parent also called het heteroberitiolysis. Standard variety heterosis is measured by comparing the hybrid to existing high yield commercial variety. Considering the fact that breeders aim to develop cultivars that excel in performance to existing commercial ones, standard variety heterosis is perhaps most desirable to breeders. Heterosis, though widespread in the plant kingdom, is not uniformly manifested in all species and for all traits. It is manifested at a higher intensity in traits that have fitness value and also more frequently and at higher levels among cross-pollinated species than self-pollinated species. All breeding methods that are preceded by crossing make use of heterosis to some extent. However, it is only in hybrid cultivar breeding and the breeding of clonally propagated varieties that the breeder has the opportunity to exploit the phenomenon to full advantage. Hybrids may have dramatically increased yield compared to open pollinated cultivars. By the early 1930s, before extensive use of hybrid, maize, is, maize yield in the United States averaged 1,250 kilograms per hectare. By the early 1970s, following the adoption of hybrid, maize is quadrupled to 4,850 kilograms per hectare. The contribution of hybrids genotype to this increase was estimated at about 60%. The reminder being attributed to production practices. Three schools of thought have been advanced to explain the genetic basis for why fitness lost on inbreeding tend to be restored upon crossing. The two most commonly known are the dominance theory. First proposed by Devanport in 1908, and later by Lelna and the Overdominance Theory, first proposed by Shu in 1908, and later Mather and Jinx. A third theory, the mechanisms of epitasis, non allergic gene interactions, has also been proposed posed by researchers. Any viable theory should account for both inbreeding depression in cross-pollinated species upon selfing and increased vigor in F1 upon hybridization. It should be pointed out that the proposed mechanisms do not occur in exclusion to one another, but indeed could operate simultaneously, each in different genes. Further, even though the dominance theory is the most favored by most scientists, none of the heterosis is completely satisfactory. The dominance theory assumes that bigger in plants is conditioned by dominant functional alleles, recessive alleles being deterious or neutral in effect, mostly represent, representing, representing loss of function, 
versions of the original dominant gene. It follows then that a genotype with more dominant alleles will be more vigorous than one with few dominant alleles. Consequently, inbreeding parents that are homozygous dominant or heterozygous at most loci will be vigorous, but upon inbreeding heterozygous loci may result in progeny that is homozygous for recessive non-functional alleles at several or may many loci resulting in inbreeding depression. If such inbreeding is done on two parents, that are of distinct origin. Chances are low that they will carry deterious alleles for the same loci. Therefore, crossing two such largely homozygous parents with complementary dominant and recessive alleles will concentrate more favorable alleles in the hybrid than either inbred parents. In practice, linkage and the large number of genes to be taken care of prevents the breeder from developing inbred lines that contain all dominant alleles in homozygous state. Inbreeding depression occurs upon selfing because the deleterious, deleterious recessive alleles that are protected in the heterozygous condition became homozygous and are expressed. In corn, inbred lines, inbred lines have been developed with a limited number and limited deleteriousness of homozygous recessive alleles, resulting in only limited inbreeding depression. These inbred lines are sufficiently fit to produce enough seed to severe as parent for hybrid cultivar seed production. To illustrate this theory, assume a quantitative trait like seed yield is conditioned by four loci. Assume that each allele in the dominant homozygous or heterozygous state contributes to to unit of unit to the phenotype, while a recessive homozygous genotype contributes one unit. A cross between two inbred parents produces the following outcome. P1 is large A, large A, small B, small B, large A, uh, large C, large C, small B, small D. And P2 are uh, small A, small A, large B, large B, small C, small C, large D, large D. And large A, large A, uh, uh, the value of the large A, large A are two. And heterozygous is also two. And the recessive homozygous one. Then two, plus one plus two plus one equals six. And P2, one plus two plus one plus two equals six. And the hybrids, genotypes of hybrid, hybrid is large A, small A, large B, small B, large C, small C, large D, small D. Then two plus two plus two plus two equals eight. Because the homozygous and the heterozygous dominant state will both contribute two units to the phenotypes, the result is that the F1 would be more productive than either parent. The phenomenon of a heterozygote being superior to the best performing homozygote is called overdominance, not dominance, but overdominance. Heterozygosity pass C is assumed to be responsible for heterosis. A possible explanation for this should could be the fact that genes normally have pleiotropic effect and thereby contribute to simultaneously to be 
to many measurable traits of the plants. The overdominant theory assumes that the alleles of a gene, for example, large A, small A, are uh, contrasting, but each has a different favorable effect in the plants. In this view, alleles is a uh, in this view, allele A is not supposed to have a loss of function. Not supposed to have a loss of function. Consequently, a heterozygous locus would have greater positive effect than either homozygous locus and by extrapolation, sorry, extrapolation, a genotype with more heterozygous loci would be more vigorous than one with less heterozygous loci. To illustrate this phenomenon, consider a quantitative trait conditioned by four loci. Assume that recessive, heterozygote, and homozygote dominance contribute one, two, and one and a half unit to the phenotypic value, respectively. Heterozygosity is the highest straight value of the three genotypes. Then B, uh, large A, large A, small B, small B, large C, large C, small D, small D. Then one half, one half and one, and one half and a one equal five. The other parent, small A, small A, large B, large B, small C, small C, large D, large D. Then, one plus one half plus one plus one half equal five. Then all the locus are hetero, heterozygosity, large A, small A, large B, small B, ah, sorry, small, large D, small C, and large D, small D. Then the uh, values are two plus two plus two plus two, plus two equal eight. Where the dominant theory applies, heterosis theoretically can be fixed in a pure line. However, where overdominance applies, this cannot occur. Of course, both theories are not exclusive. Some type of genes may contribute to heterosis because of the dominance effect, other because of the overdominance effect. Springer and Stubler summarized four factors to note when considering the application of heterosis in crop improvement. The first, the magnitude of heterosis is variable among species. The effect of heterosis are stronger and more ubiquitous in corn than, say, Arabitopsis. Two, the level of heterosis for specific traits varies and is not correlated in different hybrids of the same species. This indicates that the phenomenon of heterosis is not conditioned by the action as of a single locus, nor does it simply represent the overall extent of heterozygosity between parents. Three, generally, Heterosis increases as the genetic distance between the parental inbreeds increases. However, there is a threshold that when genetic distance between the parents is exceeded, heterosis decreases, where this appears to suggest a relationship between genetic diversity and heterosis. This relationship is not strong enough to make it a predictive tools. Four, the allelic variation that produces heterosis does not represent the totality of variation that occurs. Not all allelic variants in a species population will be fixed in inbred lines because variant with strong deleterious phenotypes will be selected against by breeders. Consequently, the range of allelic variation in 
inbred lines that can contribute to heterosis is limited to only the variation with beneficial effect for a specific trait or that which has limited deleterious effect. In other words, not all allelic variation between parental pairs contributes to heterosis. Some allelic variation will not be fixed. That is, when the heterogamma, heterozygous state of a certain allele is deleterious to the genotype. Genetic diversity in the germplasm used in a breeding program affects the potential genetic gain that can be achieved through selection. The most costly and time-consuming phase in a hybrid program is the identification of the parental lines that would produce superior hybrid when crossed. Hybrid production exploits the phenomenon of heterosis as already indicated. Genetic distance between parents plays a role in heterosis. In general, heterosis is considered an expression of the genetic divergence among cultivars. When heterosis is significant for certain traits, it may be concluded that there is genetic divergence among the parental cultivars for that those traits. Information on the genetic diversity and distance among the breeding lines and the correlation between genetic distance and hybrid performance are important for determining breeding strategies, classifying the parental lines, defining heterotic groups, and predicting future hybrid performances. Then uh, now, the uh, presentation uh, finished. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Yuki Ozaki for the lecture. Now we are moved to the discussion sessions. Please, for the participant, raise your hand or write your questions in the chat box. Okay, Hana Aziza Salsabila from class E, please. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Hana Aziza Salsabila from class E. I'd like to ask about that in your further explanation about healthy tomato plants that is inoculated with tomato powder module. My question is how will the result become if diseased plant is cross-pollinated with healthy plant and how can it be possible to be to become another healthy plant? That's my question. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Hey, you, I think you, you meant to say that the, uh, pardon me, I know, if possible, please say, say again. <laughs> about the question <laughs> sorry uh, please say again of the question uh, my question was uh how will the result become if disease plant is cross-pollinated with healthy plant uh, 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 yes and how can it be possible to become healthy again mm -hmm. yes and thank, you, thank you hi yeah uh, Infection of the pathogen is only the uh, method for the evaluating the uh, resistance degree. And when the uh, resistance gene would be introduced from uh, 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 resistance gene of the wild species are introduced to you know, cultivated species, then uh, they are crossed. And uh, the, we can get off, offspring between the, pair, between the plant then it, it, it will be possible to evaluate the uh, degree of resistance by uh, infection, by infecting the pathogens. Is it okay? No. 
Do you get the point, Hana? Uh, yes, like I said, let me um, a bit confirming. So it depends on the resistance degree of the plants. Ah, resistance degree, eh, to interspecific plant, interspecific plant, the degree of the this is resistance of interspecific plant is the same as as the wild species. Both are resistance. The dominant character is. Okay, I got uh, it's clear enough for me, Sensei. Thank you for the yeah. explanation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next is Naomi Grace from Class E. Okay, thank you for the Ms. Azen. Uh, so I want to greet Mr. Ozaki. Good morning, Mr. Ozaki. So I want to ask about, uh, actually, I'm wondering, uh, is there any possibility that self-pollinated plants can be crossed over with cross-pollination plants? And if it's, uh, if it's so, is there any special treatment that should be given? And it's my first question, and I have uh, two questions. Is it okay, Mr. Ozaki? It's okay. And my other question is, you said before in the presentation that heterosis uh, breeding will produce a divergence um, characteristic different from the parental. And uh, my question is, is there any possibility that the progeny don't have uh, the good quality SM as the parents or the progeny will have uh, the good quality over the parental? That's my question, Mr. Ozaki. Thank you. The first question is the uh, method for making interspecific hybrid between two, two species. I, I, then yes. it, it depends on the uh, combination of crosses. Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, the normal cross pollinations uh, enables to make hybrids, but uh, some in some some other cases it, it is impossible to make a hybrid seed by uh, normal pollination. Then in that case, the in vitro culture uh, by using the immature uh, uh, zygotes. Uh, carried out or some other techniques for the pollen or ovules are uh, applied for uh, obtaining F1 hybrid, interspecific F1 hybrid. It depends on the uh, combination of crosses. And the second is the uh, to heterosis in the nat natural population. Yeah, then, uh, then the, uh, of course, that in that case, it depends on the uh, species. There are uh, several types of uh, flowering plants. For, for example, a soybean is a, a self-pollinating pr plant. It, the fertilization occurs before flowering, before, uh, before the petal opening. The fertilization occurs. Then most uh, all the soybeans are inbred line in, across uh, inbred lines, self-pollinating. Then in that case, natural population, all of the genotypes in the natural population in the soybean is uh, homozygous. Then there is no uh, inbreeding depression. But in the alpha alpha, uh, the inbreeding depression is very large. That means uh, if the inbred, uh, inbreeding advances, the seed, uh, the seed vigor decreases. Then in that case, the uh, uh, hetero heterogenic heterogeneity is necessary for uh, continuing the uh, natural alpha, alpha alpha population. Is it okay? Can I give my feedback, Mr. Ozaki? So the answer of my two question is all, all of the technique different uh, must have a different technique because uh, it depends on the variation of the plants also. Yes, yes. 
Thank you for the answer, Mr. Ozaki. Thank you. I guess there is a two questions, right? Naomi Grace. The second question is answered. Yeah, it's, it's okay. already the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next is Dewa Ayubutu from Class E. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. I want to say good morning to Mr. Ozaki and if yeah. everyone in this room. My name is Dewa Ibuti Dira from Class E. Uh, I want to ask about the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So from what I've read from articles and some sources, it is mostly stated that uh, the mutation shouldn't happen at all, so the equilibrium can, can be reached. But uh, in your presentation, it is stated that the mutation rate of allele large A have to be equal with allele small a. But the uh, uh, mutation is something that cannot easily predict, right? So how can we know the mutation rate of allele large A is equal to allele small A and the equilibrium can be reached? Thank you. Oh, it is very difficult <laughs> question. <laughs> Thank you. And at hardy weinberg equilibrium is a theory without, without mutation or at the, and with uh, full cross pollination, no no inbreeding. Then, uh, if the mutation occurs in a, uh, some percentages, then the equilibrium condition is will be changed by uh, by advancing the generations. So, do you, do you get the point, Nami? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat it once again? Yeah. Ah, uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is a theory. Ah, can I, can I, a theory without uh, with the uh, the neglection of the uh, mutation, natural mutation, and uh, uh, all the population should be uh, maintained by. Uh, open cross pollination. That, uh, that is the uh, uh, necessity of for the Hardy Weinberg equi equilibrium. Then, if the uh, some uh, percentage of mutation occurs, the uh, equilibrium condition will be changed by advancing the generation. Is it okay? Okay. So, so, I it, means, get it yeah. Yeah. so it means that uh, one of the requirements of the Hadri and Weinberg equilibrium is there is no is no mutation occurred there. Mm. So if there is mutations automatically, the equilib equilibrium will be changed. This is clear. Eh? Yeah. So uh, I think this is difference white special uh, linkage and uh, one discussion of the sensei from the sensei linkage and uh, mutations i think you 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 have to i mean focus that there is difference between linkage and mutation you yes. ask us about mutations mm -hmm. uh, yes. ozaki sensei explain about the uh, linkage also so there is no, uh, if there is no linkage, I think it's equilibrium is uh, not so changed or not so clearly changed. Yes. It, do you get the point? Deva, uh, Deva, yeah, Deva, sorry. Yes. Thank you, Farifin and Mr. Ozaki. I get the point now. Thank you for answering my questions. So uh, any other question from uh, another class? Because... <laughs> Because all question is from class uh, E. Yeah. As you know, Ozaki Sensei class E mean English class. So oh. we have international class. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is one of the uh, among the class in in ours. Yeah, in mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So E class is mean uh, international class or English practice. class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I encourage from another class, but if if no question from another class, then 
Let's go ahead for, from the E class. The similar tendencies are observed in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Most, most of the Japanese people are shy, like me. <laughs> <laughs> the shy is difficult, but uh, we, we, can, we don't catch the meaning. Is it clearly or, or not understands? Mm. Mm. This is, yeah, yeah. If they not understand, it's a problem. Mm. But if they have already cleared, then uh, is this okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, moderator, encourage okay. them. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And another question from Rahmat Julio. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. And good, good morning to all. And good morning to Mr. Ozaki. Uh, my name is Rahmat Julio, and I'm, and I'm from E class. My question is, how to reduce the influence of inbreeding depression on self-pollinated plants? So, thank you. And how, how to reduce the what? How to reduce the influence of inbreeding depression, as you explained ah. before. Mm. Uh, how to reduce the, in, uh, the inbreeding depression? Yes, sir. Ah, yes. Uh, to, for example, I, I said previously, alpha alpha is, uh, shows a uh, very heavy inbreeding depression. Then in that case, at F1 hybrid are uh, uh, produced for uh, overcoming the uh, inbreeding depression. And uh, uh, but the, for pr producing F1 hybrid, the uh, pure line should be maintained. But the pure line uh, also uh, shows the inbre uh, inbreeding depression. Then in that case, the uh, inbreeding lines are maintained not by the uh, true self-pollination, but the uh, population, inbreeding um, within the population. Is it okay? Uh, can you repeat that, sir, for uh, the last statement? Uh -huh. uh, Inbreeding depression can be reduced by crossing between different uh, lines, between the cultivars. And, uh, but in some case, the pure line should be uh, maintained for the breeding. Then in that case, uh, true pure line is, shows the uh, inbreeding depression, then uh, it is uh, maintained by the crossing within the uh, population. Yeah. Mm. Very clo uh, closely related, uh, genetically closely related, but uh, genetically uh, a part of difference. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, uh, again, it's some explanation the in breeding depressions is, uh, I think you will find any pure line or, or any, in every pure line or in breeding, in breeding uh, lines, in breed line, uh, you can reduce by open pollinated. That's mean from the populations, not by crossing. Yeah, by crossing, even in uh, self-crossing or by ship mat crossing. So you can reduce with the uh, open pollinated that uh, Ozaki Sensei uh, told that this, this is populations. Yeah, populations means uh, open, pollin open pollinated and, and among the population, this ones. This is, uh, this is only the, the one way or uh, any other alternative, Sensei? I think that is the uh, main method for maintaining the uh, near, near, near pure line. <laughs> I think that yeah. previous, previously I uh, expressed the uh, mass selection of the cultivar. Mass, yes. yeah. mass selection is the uh, main method for uh, maintaining the nearly uh, pure lines in the Alpha, alpha or such like such as the yeah. uh, 
uh, inbreeding uh, uh, species. Is it okay? Yes. So you can do uh, like a mass selection also. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, mass selection. So you, this is a way to a method to reduce uh, inbreeding depressions. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think Nala Octavia previously raised hand. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, I want... From what class are you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my name is Nala Octavia. I am from class G. I want to ask. Uh, I would like to know the process on the inbreeding tree where the more selfing it gets the more homozygous parental will be produced and laser heterozygous allele. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I can cut, I cannot catch the detailed words. Inbreeding is what I, I can only catch inbreeding and the homozygous and heterozygous. And I want to have a question again. I'm repeated, yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, yeah, please repeat. Uh, I would like to know the process on the inbreeding tree where the more selfing it goes, the more homozygous parental will be produced and lesser heterozygous allele. Ah, it, you meant to say the inbreeding, how, uh, how to obtain the inbreeding strains? Yes. <laughs> inbreeding strains can be obtained by making selfing. Selfing or uh, the continuous su successive crossing with uh, by using one uh, strains selfing or uh, the, the continuous back crossing by using the susceptible uh, 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 successive one species is it okay i think i, I think you mute mute is it okay, Nala? Do you get the point? Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. So th this, uh, you you have to use the shelving or sit nothing like like I described uh, in this lecture. Just shelving or sit nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. but shelving is uh, faster than than sit nothing or half sit nothing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Nala, is, is it okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Before we continue the discussions, uh, please, uh, for the lecturer and the students to fill the attendance form in the chat box. Okay, and the next question is from Aditya Bagas from class E. Thank you for the opportunity. So good morning to you all and good morning to you too, Sensei. My name is Adita Bagaswara and I'm from class E. I would like to ask, actually I'm curious about the phenotypic value that you just shared earlier. I'm curious about the about the number, like the dominant homozygous dominant allele has two numbers and then the heterocygot has two and the recessive dominant allele has one. I, I'm just curious, are there any determination that that we can add the number like two or two and one or maybe one and a half? I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious at that, same thing. Thank you. Thank you for your question. The, the value at number one and two or one and a half and two and a half is a, a simple example for the, uh, uh, for, for explaining the uh, dominance and overdominance uh, smoothly. That, that is one uh, typical uh, uh, case. In some, in some cases, the uh, plant height 
or uh, yield or uh, disease resistance and something like that. The values can be uh, given by the characters. But that the value uh, to, in, for the explain uh, this time is for the explanation. Simply yes. Is it okay? The important point is the uh, uh, heterogeneous plant shows the uh, uh, dominant homozygous value as uh, the same, same to the uh, homozygous to uh, dominant or uh, heterozygous values are uh, larger than both parents. Th that is a very yeah, the most important uh, point of the value. Yes. So uh, I think perhaps uh, the, the value to 1.5 or one and a half or one is the uh, illustrations to explain the offer dominant and uh, the dominance phenomena. Uh, in practice, I think uh, we will find the case I mean, the, the rates between uh, and phenotype. So from this, we can illustrate, because this is, this is lecture. So we, we explain with illustrations. Yeah. If the dominance is like two and uh, one for homozygotes and homozygotes, a heterozygote and one is for, for uh, the recessive ones. While in the offer dominance, we find the heterozygous is two and homozygous dominant is uh, one and half and recessive is one. Is it like, uh, is it true, Sensei? Yes, yes, true. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Do you get the point, Bagas? Yes, sir. I reckon I get the point. So thank you for your explanation, sir, and sensei. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from Finam from Fina from class Q. Okay, thank you for this change. Uh good morning, Mr. Ozaki. I'm Finam of Azatulula from Class Q, but I'm sorry, I can't Turn, turned on my camera because there is a problem with my network. Okay, we start. I read an article and in the article explained that hybrid Viker has advantages. Those are greater Viker in yield, lower overseed production, faster germination and resistant to diseases. And my question is, uh, are there external vectors that enlist the emergence of this advantage, sorry, like that. Thank you, Mr. Ozaki. I'm sorry, the, the last part, I cannot <laughs> catch that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I uh, can't understand my question, sir. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, yes, please, yeah. Uh, please say again. Please repeat again, say again. Okay. Uh, I repeat my question, sir. Uh, an article that I've read in there explained that hybrid Viker has advantages. Those are creative Viker in yield, lower or seed production, faster germination, and resistant to disease. Mm -hmm. And my question is, are there external vectors that influence the emergence of this advantage? Like that, sir. Emergence of vintage? Moderator, can you explain? I'm sorry, I cannot catch the last statements also. <laughs> <laughs> you can catch the last statement. Yes, yes sorry. Statement. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, from the advantage that I explained, and my question is, are there external vectors mm -hmm. that influence the, the emergence of this advantage? Mm -hmm. Like that. Advantage. 
Is there Advantage. any external external factors? Yes, sir. Influence. Yeah. Oh, influence. Influence. Uh, the performance of the high bridge. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. In case of dominant or dominant, over dominant. Yeah, what, whatever dominant or, or over dominant, because mm. she read that that uh, she got information that hybrid mm. is uh, has uh, higher potential, G potential, mm -hmm. uh, germinations, and something, mm -hmm. some other uh, characters. Yes. So, is there any? external or any other factors than genetic factors like uh, uh, heterosis uh -huh. yeah. because, because uh, one char for example one character uh, some characters are governed by one locus but the the other characters are governed by uh, several uh, locus then I, I I explain that. You should. Do you see? It's not clear. Ah, yes. For example, the yield. Uh, this is a one simple case. If the yield are uh, governed by the four locuses, then uh, this pure lines are large, large, small, b, small, b, large, large, small, b, small, b. And this pure lines are small, a, small, a, large, b, large, b, small, c, small, c, small, b, small, b. And the hybrid are large, small, a, large, b, small, b, large, c, small, d, large, b, small, d. Then the yield uh, lead of the hybrid is more than their parents. That is a, a, a dominant theory. Is it is it okay? It, in some case, some some character some uh, characteristics are governed by more than one locuses. Then all the locuses uh, become to change the heterogeneity. Then the, the F1 shows the Vega. Is it okay? No? I misunderstanding. <laughs> so any any other influence? Uh, any any other influence? Uh, yeah, then uh, gene like uh, allele or uh -huh. from allele or no? Yeah. I I, th I think there is other uh, factors for uh, 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 influencing the hetero heterosis. For for example, the interaction of the two gene two lo locuses and the, uh, something like that. But the details in formations are not so many now. Then it should be uh, clarified in the future. Is it okay? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's clear and it's okay, sir. Thank you for the answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think that is the last questions uh, because the time is already 10.25. Uh, thank you, Professor Ozaki and the participants who has been actively joined in this discussion sessions. Uh, this lecture is about to come to the very end. I hope you have found your lecture on this three-in-one program are informative and helpful. Thank you very much. Till we meet again, may all of you have a great day. See you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you, Ojaki Sensei. Thank you very much. So, see you in uh, November. Next three, yeah. <laughs> in October. <laughs> yes. Thank you.